Welcome to Auto Chatter. Today's episode is about the Toyota Compact trucks in the United States. They've been on offer here since 1964. The larger T100s and Tundra that came much later I plan on discussing in a future episode. As always, facts, opinions, and speculation will be given. Please like and subscribe as it helps my channel a lot. Hit the bell to know the instant I've made another attempt to embarrass myself. So, without further ado, let's see if the best-selling compact trucks in the U.S. were always Toyotas like today. Spoiler alert, they were not. This isn't technically the first Toyota truck you could buy in the U.S. The Toyota FJ45 takes that honor, which was a pickup version of the Land Cruiser. I feel, however, that the Land Cruiser deserves its own future episode, so let's get back to the Stout 1900. This arrived for sale in the U.S. for the 1964 model year. It had a 1.9 liter four-cylinder engine with 79 horsepower or so. The version we got here was technically what Toyota called a light stout in other markets. It had a softer ride and was lighter duty than a regular stout sold overseas that we never got. Sales were not brisk to start as Toyota sold, drumroll please, four stouts in 1964. Sales improved more in later years. I mean, they really couldn't get any worse, right? But this model truck did not resonate with U.S. buyers. Nissan's Datsun trucks had a head start in the truck market here, and the, the ones that they had were best selling in the class. They would also remain so for uh, some time at this point. The Stout did very well in other markets overseas though. This little guy had a 4 speed manual and it was a 4 on the tree. What's that? Well, the shifter wasn't on the floor think of it as a manual transmission but it looked like a column shifter. I've only experienced one vehicle with a column shift manual. It was a 73 Chevy pickup. I much prefer my gears on the floor. Information on stouts in the US is kind of scarce because they didn't sell well. Toyota even dropped the model from our shores until its replacement came for 1969. MSRP on a 1966 stout was $1,795 which is about 16500 today. Toyota went back to the drawing board and brought us the Hilux for 1969. The company was getting its act together in North America as the Corona became a modest hit by the mid-1960s. They altered the car to better suit American needs in an uh, automobile, making it more powerful and adding popular options like air conditioning and automatic transmissions. They also improved the reliability on the car greatly since the initial car had a lot of issues. Uh, this vehicle continued to impress and in 1968 there was a new version of it called the Corolla. You have probably heard of that one. It's the best selling car of all time by the way. But this is about Toyota trucks, so let's get back to the Hilux. It had a 108 horsepower, 1.9 liter engine with a 4 speed manual. It was no longer a car with a bed like the older Corona based truck. This was the truck with the odd turn signals up front. They stuck them there because otherwise there'd be holes where the Japanese spec side view mirrors would go. Nissan still had more of a pulse on the American market. Uh, and what they wanted in a mini truck at this point, and their sales were reflecting this. But Toyota isn't one to rest on their laurels, and sales are getting better. A 1971 Hilux had an MSRP of $1,978, or $14,500 today. This model brought a lot of new options for Toyota trucks in America. A long bed was available, even though they were on offer in other markets years before. The styling was far more sporty than utilitarian this time too. Around this time, Toyota created a partnership with a California-based company called Atlas to build beds for Toyota trucks. So the trucks were imported here without them. Why do that? The chicken tax. 
there was a 25% tariff on imported trucks, but a cabin chassis was only a 4% tax. Toyota would eventually purchase Atlas and rename it Toyota Auto Body California. The legendary R-Series four-cylinder engines made their debut in this truck. You could get a 2.0-liter 18R or a 2.2-liter 20R. This series of engines, as we will see, enjoyed a long life under the hood of Toyota trucks. They were not powerhouses, but their reputation for reliability and being overbuilt is well documented. Horsepower was in the mid-90s to low 100s range, depending on which engine you chose. The Hilux name started disappearing from this truck this generation in the US. By the mid-1970s, it was referred to as a Toyota pickup and the larger 20R engine was now standard in the US. This was the first generation of the now well-known SR5 package for 1977, which stood for Sports Rally 5. It was a sporty model with the 5 meaning 5-speed manual. 4-speed manuals were still standard. A 3-speed automatic was also an option this generation, with the exception of extended cab mini trucks that Nissan introduced for 1977. Toyota was becoming quite competitive in the mini truck battle now. 73 models had an MSRP of $2,589 or about $17,400 today. Ah, the truck of my youth, literally. My first car was a 79 Toyota long bed pickup in orange, very similar to this one. The 2.2 liter 20R carries over at first until 1981 when the 22R debuts. This is a uh, four cylinder many Toyota owners see under their hood for years to come. A larger 2.4 liter version of the 20R with a bit more power. It's still carbureted at this point, like all the Toyota trucks before. But that's not even all the news for 1981. The 4x4 versions are now here. It uses solid front axle setup and one could uh, that one could call Land Cruiser like. 82 and 83 models switched to square headlights, and 83s offered a limited production Mojave model with only 3,500 units made. It was a fancier SR5 trim with a starting price around $8,300 or 24,800 today. If you're a fan of the movie Toy Story, the Pizza Planet truck is basically one of these. The owner's manual scene says it's a 1978 model, but it looks more like a 79 to me. 79 Toyota trucks started at $4,748, or about $19,500 today. These were popular Toyota trucks and brought even more features to the model. A extended cab is finally available for 1984 called an extra cab. I say finally because rival Nissan first offered it in 1977. 84 was also the first year you can get an optional fuel injected 22R engine dubbed the 22RE. These, uh, there was also non-turbo and turbo diesel engines briefly, but they were gone after 1986. Gas was pretty cheap at this time in history so diesels were not as popular in the United States. 85 was the last year of a still sought after truck to this day. The 85 4x4 models were the last with the solid front axles. 4x4 trucks got an independent front suspension for 1986. A 85 SR5 4x4 extra cab was Marty McFly's truck in the Back to the Future movies. To counter Nissan's V6 truck, Toyota offered a turbocharged 22R TE engine. It had about 135 horsepower. Only a few ponies shy of the Nissan V6 then. This was short lived as by the end of this model's run, Toyota had a 150 horsepower 3 liter V6 available too. Technically a separate model now, but the Forerunner arrived for 1985 and it was basically a Toyota truck with a removal back fiberglass top. Top Gear fans know that this was the body style Toyota truck that the trio drowned in ocean water, set on fire, performed several other abuses to it, and finally placed it on top of a tall building that was toppled with explosives. 
The truck survived it all and was an amusing two-part episode I recommend watching. A 1984 pickup had an MSRP of $6,188 or about $17,750 in 2022. This truck was not as revolutionary as the last one, but that doesn't mean it's a bad truck. Far from it. There was just a lot of new features that came out before, and this truck benefited accordingly. The styling had smoother lines from before, and uh, nothing radically different. These trucks were hot. Don't rock the boat if you don't need to. They did have a one-piece cargo walls in the bed, which was needed. The earlier trucks did not and were prone to rust at the seams because of this. Nissan had the same problems until 1985 when they changed their bed design too. The four and six cylinder engines basically carried over. These were the first Toyota trucks built in the US and a factory in California. Some of them anyway at this point. Same factory where Teslas are built today actually. This is where a few Toyota truck stories end for the US and others begin. The wonderfully reliable 22RE four-cylinder was last used on these trucks in 1994, as was the 3.0-liter V6. This was also the last time we had basically the same truck as the rest of the world. The Hilux truck carries on to this day and has had several revisions since 1994. But uh, we get an all-new truck for 1995. 89 Toyota trucks had an MSRP starting at $7,998, or about $19,200 today. The previous trucks were all Hilux models, even though they were not called that in the U.S. for 20 years or so by this point. This new truck was designed for the North American market, where a truck may be more of a daily driver than a utilitarian workhorse. A more civilized truck, one could say. Toyota decided to give it a name here again after two decades. It had all new engines. Two four-cylinders. A 2.4 liter or 2.7 liter with 142 or 150 horsepower respectively. The larger four was the base four-wheel drive engine or you could get a 3.4 liter V6 with 190 horsepower. Manual and automatic trucks were available. These trucks were a bit larger than the last generation. They got a minor facelift for 1998 and a new pre-runner trim arrived. It was a two-wheel drive truck with the stance and ride height of a four-wheel drive. Makes all the difference to me as Toyota trucks always look so much better than and before as four-wheel drive models. The two-wheel drive ones were uh, kind of low. Some other trucks like Chevy's S10 and Ford Rangers, they weren't so drastically different looking in, from two-wheel drive to four-wheel. 2001 got another facelift tweak and double cab option just one year after Nissan's Crew Cab Frontier. It was about this time in the early 2000s, Toyota would outsell the Nissan trucks and eventually everyone else in this class in the U.S. A 95 Tacoma MSRP started $11,848, or about $23,200 today. This truck got even bigger. It's now about 300 to 400 pounds heavier, depending on trim, than before. It had three cabs still, regular, access cab, or double cab. Four different transmissions with four and five speed automatics and five and six speed manuals. Two bed lengths with a five or six footer. Engines were pared down to just two again. You could get a 159 horsepower 2.7 liter four cylinder or a four liter V6 with 236 horsepower. All Tacomas now had a fully composite bed, so rust is not an issue there. This was the last generation you could get a regular cab Tacoma. They made an interesting model this generation called an X-Runner. It was a rear-wheel drive sport truck with the V6 and a six-speed manual only. It was lower than a stock Tacoma and had modifications designed to make it handle on road better, plus had a limited slip differential. 
You could even have your Toyota dealer bolt on a TRD supercharger, upping the pony count to 304. They actually made quite a few special edition Tacomas this generation, clearly following the Chevy Corvette's playbook. Besides the X-Runner, these included TRD Sport and Off-Road. This is where off-road enthusiasts shop for Toyota trucks, appearance and performance upgrades. Wasn't really uh, special editions per se, but they were special. Iron Man Edition, named for the Ivan Iron Man Stewart, not for Tony Stark. He raced Toyota trucks. This 2008 truck had the 304 horsepower supercharged V6 and a Magnaflow exhaust. TX Baja Trucks, lifted with beadlocker rims and other goodies. Only 1,500 were made each year from 2011 to 2014. TRD Pro, another lifted model with other goodies besides even what the TX Baja had. These were all 2015 models and only 1,200 were made. Sounds like an encore edition of the TX Baja, basically. 05 Tacomas had an MSRP of $14,315 or 21,850 today. Is it fair to even call this a compact at this point? They can weigh up to 4,500 pounds or so now. Two engines are available. The 2.7 liter four cylinder basically carries over, but has a few more ponies now and it's rated at 161. The V6 is all new and is a smaller displacement than before. Now it's a 3.5 liter unit with 278 horsepower which is a decent jump. But this truck is bigger. Transmission options for the 4 cylinder was a 6 speed automatic or a 5 speed manual that was available for 2016 and 2017. After that all 4 cylinders were automatic only. The V6 also has a 6 speed automatic or 6 speed manual. Eventually, during this current model run, a V6 manual is limited to select trims by 2023. This is one of the two remaining manual truck options for this year, the other being the Jeep Gladiator. Toyota put even more effort into making this truck a comfortable place to be than before. Higher quality plastics inside, touch screens, a quieter interior, and more. There are six trim levels to choose from, base SR, mid-level SR5, TRD Off-Road, TRD Sport, Limited, and TRD Pro. The TRD models are still geared towards more extreme off-roaders, especially the TRD Pro. Extended cab or double cab are the remaining body options with either short or long beds. For 2020, the Tacoma got a mild facelift with the grille being the most obvious change. In 21, a TRD lift kit was available on 20, 20 and up Tacomas. It's a dealer installed one with Bilstein shocks giving uh, an additional 1.7 inches of lift. I'm not sure how much longer until the next gen Tacoma, but Toyota seems to change it every 10 years or so since the mid 90s. The 16 Tacoma had a base price of 24,500 or 30,400 today. The 23 Tacoma starts at $27,250. Toyota trucks have a long history in the U.S. market. It certainly didn't make waves at first, but Toyota fought its Japanese rival Nissan for many truck superiority in the 70s and 80s while dealing with domestic contenders and eventually took the throne in the 21st century. Tacoma sales in 2021 in the U.S. was over 252,000 units. That's over 100,000 more than what they sold in the year 2000. Their reputation for reliability is strong and their resale value can be ridiculous because everybody knows they're likely to last. This has been my Toyota Compact Truck Chatter. I do hope you liked it. Please leave a like and subscribe to let me know. Comments are always welcome, so share those Tacoma stories with me please, or regular Toyota trucks for that matter. Until next time, chatter out.